All right. So I have the, uh, the great opportunity of introducing our next uh, speaker and uh, making sure I see you uh, online. That's great. Um, I will always remember uh, our next speaker. And I will tell you, I, uh, I really, really try to make sure I get people's names, pronunciation, and everything correct. And uh, as I was getting ready to prepare for our next uh, speaker in a different summit um, in Asia, Asia Pacific, um, I've generally asked people to give me kind of a phonetic, how do you say it? And he was the only person that has recorded a wave file and sent it to me. And I still assure you, I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> I referenced that wave file from summits ago, just to, to kind of refresh my memory. But I, um, we're joined by Uduak Daniels. He has uh, over 20 years of experience working in the ICS space, working for asset owners across multiple industries, multiple geographies. So kind of a diversity of uh, where he's worked, types of industries and spaces and places, but also across that 20 year career, kind of being involved in different life cycle phases of these systems from a design to a deployment and moving into assessments and security engagements as well as incident response. Um, today, he's gonna be talking to us about utilizing alarm and system events in your security monitoring for ICS programs and specifically from kind of an asset owner operator perspective within uh, Saudi Saudi Aramco. So, Uduak, I hope I got it right. <laughs> and uh, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you, uh, Tim. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, so just a little bit of um, Tim's basically done the, uh, the bio and my name um, pronunciation. It's, uh, it's Uduak. He actually got it well. Um, so my name is Uduak Daniels. Um, you know, he, We've talked about it. I've had over about 60 years in cybersecurity and uh, working with asset owners in different uh, large global um, asset owners and just getting in the trenches and trying to figure out what a cybersecurity program should look like from all the different components, especially related to plants and facilities. And uh, I'm currently doing a, a lot of governance work with, uh, um, with the ISA Secure um, under the ISA. And, I'm also doing a, little, a bit of work too for Saudi Aramco in terms of figuring out what standards and procedures do we align with and as we better shape our cybersecurity posture for, for our plants and facilities. So that's a bit of currently what I'm doing right now. Um, today's presentation, I'm probably gonna go through it pretty quick so that we have enough time to potentially have some questions, but um, we wanna talk about security monitoring. It's, you know, security monitoring is, something that has been around for a long time. Pretty much IT environments have, have established that. And over the years, the OT environments have adopted, um, they're like, what about us? Um, and traditionally IT environments have started creeping in and bringing technologies, IT technologies into our facilities. And so we'll talk about that, have some definitions about ICS alarms and events, um, and also IT security events, events generated from IT type systems. We'll look at governance because I always say, why are we doing this? What, what, what are the policies and procedures driving these adoption of these security controls as security monitoring as a control? We'll look, about, look over alarm and events. Um, we have the diverse uh, user groups here. And so some people don't really know about what an alarm is. And we'll talk, uh, make some high level definitions of that. Talk about OPC, what's that about? How does that fit in? Um, security mon um, event management, and we'll look at firewalls and event correlation, which is the crux of it. All right, so we'll dive into security monitoring. Um, so I, I'd like to introduce some, some terms. Um, we, we would always say that ICS is uh, Industrial Automation and Control Systems for this presentation, PLCs, DCS, SCADA, those type of systems. Applications would be applications that are centered around the controllers, and that's like uh, Honeywell Experian, Delta V, uh, Centum VP and these different technologies, um, Symantec PCS7, TriStation. And so those are when we wanted, as for the presentation, anytime we're talking about ICS applications, have that in mind. Um, ICS alarms, a uh, process operator alarm is generated and sent from um, uh, process automation systems and industrial automation systems. So they typically record um, unexpected events. Um, we'll look at some of those um, briefly. Um, we'll talk of information technology systems, not necessarily above the plant DMZ, but IT systems that are used within the plants, uh, traditional uh, ethernet switches, um, 
HMIs operating on Windows operating systems. Um, IT events, um, you know, syslog, those type of events, WMI, and then security event and, and uh, information and event management systems called SIM. And then SOC, Security Operations Center. Traditionally, most organizations are putting that um, security information from the ICS environments into their centralized IT SOC. So, so what is the problem? And uh, most enterprises, um, SIM solutions are designed for IT environments. So if you look at the traditional, how SIM solutions basically evolved over the years, they started off as I, in, in the information space in the IT environments and gradually as mandates began to unfold, ICS adoption started coming in. So, uh, but a lot of these technologies over the past say 10 years have lacked uh, ICS specific considerations. It's basically bringing them in and trying to figure out how um, they would work in the ICS space. Um, SOC lack context. Most if you go to a security operations center today and you try and talk about, even if these events are coming into the SOC, they don't understand the context they don't understand what a security alert should look like in an ICS environment again, but they're more familiar with the traditional information space and informational environments. And so it's really difficult for these SOC analysts to be able to understand what's really going on. Um, SIM implementations in ICS environments um, don't extend all the way down to level zero, one of the, you know, the para model. And so you're typically looking at DMZ uh, level three, um, sometimes level two, but they don't go lower down. And, and so there's that lack of full visibility in those SIM implementations. We have legacy systems in the IC environments that are not robust enough to even generate events. So you don't see those. ICS system is usually used for priority technology, um, specific data formats that um, some traditional SIM solutions, IT focus can't, uh, aren't able to uh, decipher. And security monitoring for real time and effective threat identity is difficult, right? Because um, everyone knows that a SIM solution is only as good as the events that are correlated to make sense of it because there's just too much info. And so if we're not getting those um, ICS events correlated with the traditional ITS events, uh, that context is, is, is lost. And so those are some of the uh, problems that are currently existed, exist. And then there's the regulation. Most regulations that are coming out right now at national levels are specifying, hey, you, you have to implement security monitoring down into the ICS, what does that mean? And so we're having to deal with uh, government mandates. I decided to spend a bit of time here so you understand what was the driver to try and figure out how do we get you know, these events from uh, industrial automation control systems into bubbled up through uh, all the levels of the, uh, of the plant environment and into the SOC. So and I, I, I grabbed this one from SANS and it's just basically a security operations survey. And the two ones I wanted to focus on were, the first one is the lack of enterprise visibility. Um, in ICS environments, systems in level zero and one are not integrated into the SIM tools. And so we've talked about that. Operators, security operation um, analysts, they lack that visibility. And then the second one is there's just too many alerts. If you, if you wanna turn on if you've tried to implement a SIM solution inside the plants um, and you're even doing network-based um, um, uh, capture and forwarding, you find out there's just too much. There's just too much data that has to go back across multiple layers all the way up to the socket. It's just too much data. Um, and that inability to correlate that data also uh, brings that lack of context to um, the, uh, the security analyst. All right, so before, why do I want to talk about governance? Uh, everything is driven by some policy or standard or procedure and that filters down through, it gets down to standards and then your, your procedures. Um, so I wanted to talk about some of the um, international global standards that are driving security monitoring inside the ICS environments. 62443 obviously has a requirement for 610. Uh, 610.1 basically specifies that um, control system events have to be included as part of the events that are considered for security, um, a robust security monitoring program. So that's what's all highlighted in bold. Um, specifications for what those events should be is not is, is explicitly defined. So they make mention here, if you look lower down on here, it talks about category, event types, 
event results originating device. So it's, you know, the industry is becoming a little, a little bit more specific on what we should, the type of events and attributes that are supposed to be captured as part of the ICS um, system components. Corporate standards and regulatory mandates are referring to. So if you go to any large enterprise and environment and operator, you know, we're all part of this ISA um, consortium and everyone is referencing 62443 as the standard for industrial automation and control systems. And so once that mandate is put inside your, your standards and your specifications, then, hey, you have to comply with this. Um, I talked about NERPs, more North American, but just to mention, we have a wide uh, audience here that are, that are from the electric community and uh, utilities. And so, yeah, it, in terms of NERP 007-6, it's also a mandate to begin to look at those critical cybersecurity uh, assets and systems and getting these events that are generated from those systems. Um, so I just wanted to bring out NERC and just um, talk about that too. NERC compliance is enforced in some industries and yeah, we've talked about that. Um, ISO 27001, kind of high level, but I why I wanted to put that in is that most organizations reference that in some way. And so, yeah, so even 27001 does have something. Um, audit record generation specified in the standards, so that's important. Um, very basic, but the mandate is clear. Um, regulators and corporate security governments reference ISO, so. And then NIST, obviously, it's a, one of the recommendations that are used to build most of our cybersecurity uh, requirements and controls. Um, it's a catalog of security and privacy controls, mentioned that. Corporate standard and regulatory mandates leverage this and so most large enterprises. So I think the last one I wanted to talk about was the ISA's 18.2. And this is shifting from general security events into alarms. So it's a specification that talks about alarm design and what are the type of um, different states, um, different methods used for alarm identification. And uh, it specifies principles for the management of an alarm system. Um, so I wanted to bring that up because we're talking about two different aspects. We're talking about IT security events, and we're also talk, going to talk about alarms. All right, so now we can jump straight into the ICS alarms events and IT security events. Um, and let's look at what is an IS, um, ICS alarm. It presents hazardous condition and these are all physical. It presents deviations from desired conditions. So conditions are typically set in the system and a deviation from that particular um, uh, condition is what um, is will trigger a hazardous condition and then subsequently an alarm. Basically also defines boundaries between normal and abnormal process conditions and brings problems that require operator attention. At the end of the day, it, there is an operator that has a view into these opera these alarms and the operator is supposed to under take a look and see what's going on so that he can be able to respond so that alarm has to be action before it's uh, that trip is turned off um and then to contrast that we have it system events we record events that are called a system or a software it provides an audit trail so we're all familiar with that and no alerts, just a record of an event. So it's slightly different because the events generated from an IT system must be forwarded ahead and on for some action to be taken. All right, so we wanna look at some characteristics of alarms and events. Um, ICS alarms, you have to define what the purpose of the alarm is. You don't just um, enable the alarm or set the condition just out of random it there needs to be a purpose why this alarm has been um, set so that because there has to be an operator type response um, another characteristics is the severity has to be defined um, time and date stamps are important uh, characteristics of um, ics alarms the frequency of occurrence how often they happen occurs and what's the consequence if the alarm if that alarm fails um, so that is all that information is part of uh, let's call it the data, the metadata, the characteristics that are presented with that particular alarm. 
Um, one more thing is that the alarm should be acknowledged. I mean, already mentioned that. IT system events, the characteristics are event log type relevance. What is this log? What type is the log? What's, what is the relevance of this log? Is it a system log, a security log, application type log? Um, severity is also defined. Um, date timestamps are important to, uh, so that, I mean, I probably don't have to explain that. Records must be unique and traceable. So we have to know what device um, generated these events. Um, and basically we'll require analysis for alerting, right? So those are typically the characteristics of alarms and events. So we deep dive a little bit into the ISES alarm system data flow. And this is from um, the 18.2 standard. And so basically, basically what we're looking at here is a diagram that is putting in the model of what an alarm system looks like all the way from the process layer here on the left, how that alarm flows through the data flow of the alarm through the sensors um, and how it goes into the different systems, the DCS systems and process automation systems, PLCs. Um, and then typically you would have historians that are set up here, alarm historians that will capture these alarms. You have alarm logs, HMIs for the operator to be able to see what, and so in some cases you might have package systems that have panels that display the alarm without actually going to an operator HMI workstation. Um, and so the alarms notify operators of abnormal conditions. DCS SIS sensors generate alarms. We've talked about that measurements of process conditions can be used to generate alarms. And now to the IT, um, security event management data flow. So you typically have IT type systems that are found in, the, uh, in our plants and facilities, firewalls, databases, Windows operating systems, uh, you know, network gateways, switches, and servers. Um, all that these systems either generate events or have agents that pull events from them. And they are sent as event logs to um, a security event monitoring uh, system or SIM solution where it's aggregated, it's correlated at some point, alerts are generated, um, it's analyzed and reporting or intelligence or forensics are um, at the at a later stage is done. So, and that's the typical two data flows. So I, I put this one here because sometimes I felt that if I had talked a little too much, I might sound a little boring. So security management blur, hey, nothing for management. So the management guys say, hey, Security monitoring, what's the story? What is in it for us? So the manual of security information to identify early cyber attacks. So this is early, Rob talked about that. It's not just about prevention, it's also about um, detection and response. And a lot of the focus should go in there. Um, it demonstrates significant value due to cost avoidance. So um, early detection of cyber attacks will reduce exposure and the consequences. So from a risk-based perspective, you can calculate that. Um, it's not just technology solution, but encompasses people, process, and technology. And uh, finally, usually easily demonstrates alignment with support organization, business, and operation strategy. So this is my stuff for the management guys who are here listening in. Take that away. And these are for the geeks and the hackers. <laughs> what about us? And I decided to put this really complicated formula. And this is what you need for event correlation and but no, I'm just kidding. The diagrams are not relevant for this presentation, but the paper is a good read. So you can, I've, I've cited it there. You can go take a look at it. It's a paper that talks about the approach to correlating security events based on machine learning. Um, but there's something in this uh, presentation for everyone. So let's dive in a little bit more. Alarm and event management systems. Um, System to prevent, minimize, and mitigate the impact of abnormal process conditions. Systems include processes for identifying, designing, and recording alarms as they are triggered in, in, in the plant environments. Alarm systems have moved away from traditionally being coupled with standalone panels. So in the past, you would have these alarm panels where they would have like a, a speaker system, alarm system, or, and then as the events occur, the operators can go and check them out. We've moved away from that now. Most they now have process uh, management system for alarms. Um, tracking and reaction to alarms are more effective with these management systems. Um, we'll talk about the life cycle. Um, just looking through that very quickly. This is just the philosophy. We can look at an alarm management life cycle. So if you're designing 
an alarm system. This is what you need to consider. Um, it's applicable for new installs or ma maintenance of uh, existing systems. Cybersecurity risk management efforts can be incorporated during philosophy and identification phases. So I wanted to put this here so that um, when you go back and you go back to your environments, when you look at the alarm management guys and, and they're designing these systems, you, our cybersecurity can plug in at certain points of the life cycle to provide some value so that the alarms are designed so that these events can be, can be grabbed and integrated with your uh, security operations uh, or security management system, uh, monitoring solutions. And then we look at the management system types. I'll move pretty fast because uh, time's kind of running out. Proprietary systems. Um, in the past, proprietary systems had alarms and applications. They have native connections. So you see all the interconnections to the different alarm servers. It was a real hodgepodge of, um, of connectivity. And then eventually the alarm servers connect to di different PLCs and um, field devices and sensors. But now um, with open standards, the advantage that open standards like OPC clients present is that you have a one-stop shop. You have a place where an OPC client communicates on, a, on an ethernet network. And it basically, you have OPC alarm servers, most vendors, um, automation vendors already have OPC um, implementations and that OPC reference models that are already designed into their solutions onto the softwares that they have. So it's an open standard. And um, all different um, field devices, PLCs can interconnect with OPC today. All right, um, see how long I have. Um, OPC alarms and events. Um, alarms are abnormal conditions. We talked about that. Events are identifiable occurrences of something happening. OPC provides a specification to address common communication interface. So that's the that's a great feature about OPC. It, it's the commonality for those who are new to ICS and are not familiar with OPC. It provides you know, different interfaces. So it will provide real-time alarm and event data monitoring on pretty much all systems that are out there. Specification creates a standardized interface to make alarm and events available, all right? It defines a standard message format. So that standard message format can be leveraged in any industry. As far as you say, you get OPC, it doesn't matter if you're transport, oil and gas, that standard is standardized across all different uh, industrial control systems environments. All right, talked about that. It's a client server based model, so it will fit into any um, ethernet type uh, environment. Alarms and events are based on operating conditions and, um, and that ties into the alarm um, specifications too. So I'll just run through this quickly. The OPC and what I want to do is compare OPC alarm and event fields and then tie that back to IT alarm event fields. You have grouping of sources of equipment, typically according to sections. Information can be specific, uh, can be beneficial for SIM and asset classification. Um, event source is also defined. Um, conditions, subscriptions are, and filters are specific events. And you have also different types. You have simple, you have tracking and different types of uh, and condition events for alarms. So um, at a high level, simple events are informational events. Tracking events are simple, are similar to simple events, but they introduce something called an act attribute. And condition events are all of the simpler events and tracking events, but also defined, predefined alarm conditions. So it's a superset of the, of the above ones. OPC tracking events, attribute fields. These are some of the fields that are there that we can reference. This is for the tracking events. So these are very similar. If you are in the IT environment, source is a feature, time is important, type. It defines what kind of a um, tracking event it is, whether the event's tracking, simple or condition, category, severity, um, one to 1,000 is low, one to um, 1,000, one is equal to low and 1,000 equal to highest, describes the events and act IDs who perform the action. All right. So for SIM, I'll kind of breeze through that really quickly. Um, system that collects and normalizes and aggregates and collects and analyzes potential threats. Alerts are generated in these systems. Rules can be um, put in place and defined. Correlation rules are putting multiple events together to, um, to uh, 
uh, sorry, multiple events are put together and correlated together to generate action. And they trigger alerts and notifications. The event correlation is critical to ensure that threats are identified in real time. Threat cases are formulated and developed. Um, so this is the typical SIM architecture. You have all the devices here on the left. You have log collectors. They normalize the logs and aggregate them together. You have a correlation engine that does the correlation of the different events. Um, security monitoring and security operations come into play. Reporting and trending, um, log storage for forensic or for retention, and you have forensics and incident response. Um, I'll quickly move through very fast. We have firewall events. Everyone, most people um, here on the call are familiar with the events that are generated from firewalls. You have application security, sorry, Windows events, I apologize. You have three different types, application security and system events. Um, and you define audit policies that are put on the system to generate these events. All right, so you have attributes and these are all the same similar. You can see some similarities between the OPC alarm events and the Windows events, time, stamp, um, things like account name, that's equal to actor, source. And so we go in and we define all of this. Hopefully the slides will be available for you guys to glean a lot of this um, information. And so firewalls control monitor incoming, incoming and outgoing network. We know all about firewalls and most firewall events are forwarded to SIM for security monitoring. We know about firewall events in themselves. You can see some similarities, source IP time and destination source port. Those are some of the event attributes. So I'll just skip through these and because I can see on the clock, I have about uh, two minutes. Um, you, you so event pro so say that again. You can go a little bit over there. You have like five minutes for questions and so you can just keep rolling. Okay. All right, thanks for that, Rob. Um, so the definition is I can, for event correlation, you can look at rules that cause that basically, um, and these are a lot of definitions that I might skip through and just get to the heart of things. Correlation rules may consider data attributes that are set to trigger an alert. An alert. So the main, I also want to talk about the meaningful data sources are less likely for false positives. So false positives are really bad in a SOC because <laughs> once they get a lot of them, most of the analysts just stop looking. And so I just decided to put a couple of these type of um, examples out there that are failed logins, user elevates privileges, user accounts logged in multiple times. These are some of the standard things that you would be looking at in a SOC in terms of examples of what could be used for event correlation. So I wanted to talk about a quick threat scenario really quickly. Um, it's very high level and hypothetical. Um, a plant has a new SIM solution installed. Um, HMI is out there. Um, OS, Windows OS logs are being forwarded. Firewall logs are being forwarded, sent to the SIM. An operator uses uh, leverages shared accounts. That happens in most of our plants and facilities, depending on how the maturity of your environment is. Um, to mitigate this risk, SIM rules are configured to alert on shared accounts and from non-designated HMIs. So these are all, I'm just painting a scenario of what a traditional SIM ITS um, security monitoring uh, setup would look like. Um, an attacker gains access to the plant automation network through some means, um, and an attacker exports a vulnerability and obtains shared operator credentials. Attacker uses a session to connect to PLCs not associated with HMI. And modify some set points. Here's a little picture of a control loop um, of a very basic one of a process fluid flow. Um, and there's some variables that we want to man manipulate here. Set points can be, mod can be remotely modified on the PLC. Modified set points are captured in OPC subscription events. So you would see that in OPC. Controller tag, you would also see this, it will come as a tag source um, and you would see that in OPC also. Control action is used to increase the flow and rate of the fluid. All these alerts can be captured in, in, in OPC and, and moved across. So put this little graph here, go through it as fast as I can. Um, you have an attacker, also have a vendor doing remote support. So they're all coming over the internet and they connect to HMI. The attacker remotely accesses the HMI and then this is what he has access to. He has access to clients, PLCs, OPC server, and typically this is the view that a 
uh, an operator would have. Attacker uses PLC software to modify the set points of a flow transmitter. Um, to evade high alarms, the attacker creates set points under the high alarm condition. And uh, unaccounted increased flow potentially causes shutdown of operations. I said it's unlikely, but hey, you know, just for the presentation. Um, firewall logs and OS logs are sent to the SIM. Um, SIM correlates OS and firewall logs, but can't, and, and, but basically there, there's no alerts triggered. They have no clue on what's going on because the OPC events are not present and are not being forward, forwarded. In this scenario, um, same scenario, an attacker basically does the same thing. But in this case, OPC clients events are being forwarded. Attacker remotely access the HMI from the internet. Um, he has access to the uh, level zero and one devices or components. Attacker uses PLC software to modify set points. He tries to evade the high alarms. Um, on account of the increased flow rate could potentially cause shutdown, unlikely, but hey, firewall logs, OPC alarm, uh, alarms and OS logs are sent to the SIM. Correlation is done. And then we, better, we get a much better alert from the SOC. And so that's the two scenarios I wanted to paint. And uh, these are the three different alarm events that you can see here. And uh, these, the, what I've highlighted in yellow are the events that are, can be correlated. And this is your correlation engine. I've just brought that out there, OPC alarms. These are events that are sent to your correlation engine. Um, Windows events of, that could be correlated with the OPC alarm events. And these are the firewall events that can be put in and correlated to be able to generate alerts for your from your SOC. And I think I've gone three minutes over. <laughs> you, you, um, you still have technically two minutes and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna use those two minutes. I know um, I really appreciate kind of the amount of information you try to pull together here and present um, on kind of the, the path you've gone in, uh, in getting to sort of this integrated view for your operators. Um, anybody can look kind of to their own industry. It's, you walk into a control room or a control center and you look at what the system operators are pulling in from weather, temperature, humidity, system stats, uh, individual plant performance, all the data that they're expected to consume and kind of over the 30, 40 years of that um, screen design, what we've done for coloring and for changes and for alarm prioritization and, and kind of alarms and bells and whistles to make it feel less like uh, Vegas and more like how do we focus an operator on what matters? And then you look to somebody like yourself that's trying to do that for the cyber operator. So they're trying to say, having a mass ton of host analysis and endpoint data sets and network traffic and alerts isn't helpful, but pointing towards kind of the information that matters is really the goal we should be driving towards. The one question I had is, I, I have a really good understanding of what you're using for kind of system and vendor specific data sets and how you're taking that from operations and using OPC. But what challenges or what guidance could you provide or what have you done to help train the uh, cyber operators that are looking at those data sets now that may have had an IT background and understand endpoint or host or network artifacts, but now they need to understand the context of that operational data and what it means. You're presenting it to them well, you're packaging it well, but how do you get in their mind space so that they know this is what matters and this is what's important? What level of kind of training or additional guidance have you had to do with those um, those operators, those cyber operators specifically? Yeah, I think it's really difficult because if you have an if you have an analyst who's looking at an, an at a screen and is looking into an IT environment, and then the next screen is into an OT environment, it's really difficult for for you to be able to to translate that in real time. So, one of the things we could do, and uh, you know, I I want to talk from um, uh, as an operator with um, with a bit of depth, is being able to designate analysts who are focused on on, on ICS and the environments because it, it's really a big hurdle to jump. And so, you know, one of the things that would be better you could do as an operator that and you have that capability is to be able to get dedicated OT guys who are looking at that. And you know, this is just one of the controls that you could look at in terms of getting visibility. I would also look to, um, you know, putting out playbooks and, and, and additional types of um, complementary security solutions. And this is not a one-stop shop to security monitoring. It's just, if you have a SIM and you've implemented it, 
and you're still on a roadmap to introduce some other type network anomaly based technologies that could ever further enhance that as part of your you know medium to long term goals this is something that's available everyone has opc alarms sitting there and so it's it's a it's a, it's a quick win <laughs> Um, yeah. And so that's that's kind of where the uh, presentation wants to focus at, but it's yeah, it's not a it's not a silver bullet. I think you shared some awesome lessons learned and some guidance for people that are marching down the path. I appreciate the presentation. Thank you a bunch, Shudwak.